In cross-sectional studies, we take snapshots. We take cross-sections. And by doing them, we measure burden of a health condition at a particular point in time. And this is a very useful way of doing this. In a recent Sero survey in Pune, India, they have found that 50% of the people who surveyed have antibodies against COVID-19. And this is very useful because it tells us about the burden of COVID-19 in a particular community. And they have actually taken a snapshot. They have taken a cross section at a particular point in time. If they do the same in future, they will find something different. If they did a serosurvey in the past, they would have found a different prevalence of people with COVID-19 antibodies. Demographic and health surveys are also good examples of cross-sectional surveys where they measure different health indicators among children, among women, among different groups of people. And in this recent survey in Bangladesh, they have nicely shown the results from the last four Bangladesh demographic and health surveys on the nutritional status of under five children. They measured stunting, they measured underweight, and they measured wasting then where they were measuring malnutrition among under five children. And they used a certain time period for that measurement during and before the time of the survey. And by having a quick look at this graph, we can clearly see how useful a cross-sectional survey can be, especially when it is done uh, on a regular basis. So this is a very good example of repeat cross-sectional surveys and it tells us about the change in the burden of a particular health condition in a particular community, in a particular population. So cross-sectional studies are good snapshots or cross-sections in a particular population on a particular health outcome. And we can also understand the status of an individual with respect to the presence or absence of both exposure and outcome. But the problem is we do that at the same point in time. And because of that, we cannot discern the temporal relationship between an exposure and disease, which is needed to establish causality because we know that the cause must happen before the effect or the outcome. But by measuring both exposure and outcome or cause and effect at the same point in time, we, did, we cannot establish that temporality or temporal relationship, which would eventually help us to establish causal association. So this is a weakness of a cross-sectional study design. Here we can see malnourished children and they were also actually having acute watery diarrhea. And they came to the stabilization center for malnourished children in Baidua in Somalia. Now, if we take a snapshot or a cross-section, we would be able to measure the prevalence of diarrhea among the malnourished children, which would be great using cross-sectional study design. But if we wanted to measure the association between malnutrition and diarrhea, or if we wanted to establish that malnutrition was causing diarrhea among them, 
it would be difficult because we were measuring malnutrition and diarrhea at the same point in time. We cannot say that they were malnourished, that's why they developed diarrhea subsequently. And also, diarrhea can cause malnutrition. Malnutrition can also cause diarrhea. So there is a reverse causality as well, or there is a causal chain between these two. And we do not know exactly which caused what. We'll not be able to tell that if we go for a cross-sectional study design. We'd not be able to tell which came first, the chicken or the egg. That's why in a cross-sectional study, the temporal relationship between exposure and disease cannot be clearly determined, but they're still very good in raising a hypothesis raising a research question. And also cross-sectional studies are always great in understanding the burden of a particular health problem in a particular community, like they did in India for COVID-19. That will help them for better planning, better resource allocation. Thank you for watching.